The Watsons go to Birmingham, Chapter 7. Every Chihuahua in America lines up to take a bite out of Byron. I was sitting at the kitchen table doing homework and watching Mama make dinner when Byron came in through the back door. He was surprised we were there because as soon as he saw us, he turned around and tried to walk right back out. Both me and Mama smelled a rat. Byron, Mama said, what have I told you about wearing that hat in the house? Oh yeah, I was just going right back. He pushed the screen door open again. Wait a minute. Byron was trapped in the doorway with his right foot in and his left foot out. Come here. Mama put down the knife she'd been peeling potatoes with and wiped her hands on a dish towel. Byron's inside foot joined his outside one in trying to get away. Uh, I'll be back in a minute. They're waiting for me down at Byron Watson. You take off that hat and get over here right now. It was he, uh, instead of here. Uh oh. Byron started walking toward Mama in slow motion, sliding his feet on the linoleum. He pulled off his hat and stood there looking down, like his shoes were all of a sudden real interesting. Byron's head was covered with a blue and white handkerchief. Mama stuck in a ton of air. What have you done? We all knew, though. She took a step back and leaned against the counter, like if it wasn't there, she'd have fallen down. Oh my God, your father will kill you. He don't have no cause to. You've gone and done it, haven't you? Byron kept his head down. Haven't you? Mama yelled. Yes, Byron yelled back. Mama reached out and snatched a handkerchief off of Bai's head. Me and Mama both went. <gasps> Byron had gotten a conk, a process, a do, a butter, a ton of trouble. His hair was reddish brown, straight, stiff, and slick looking. Parts of it stuck straight up like porcupine stickers because mama hadn't been too gentle when she snatched a handkerchief off. He smoothed his hair back in place. Well, mama said, that's it. You are now at your daddy's mercy. You've known all along how we feel about putting those chemicals in your hair to straighten it, but you decided you are a grown man and went and did it anyway. Mama was real hot, but she surprised me. She just shook her head and went back to peeling potatoes. Byron stood there looking at his feet and I kept pretending I was doing homework. Finally, Mama slammed the knife down and turned around to look at Bai again. Byron stood perfectly still while Mama walked around him a couple of times, taking a better look at his hair. This looked like the Indians circling the wagons again, but this time it was Byron who had to be the white people. Finally, Mama stopped and said, but before your, God, your father gets to me, gets to you, let me ask you something. What do you think? What do you think now that you've gone and done it? Does it make you look any better? Is this straight? Mama flicked some more Byron's hair back up porcupine style. Is this straight mess more attractive than your own hair? Did those chemicals give you better looking hair than me and your daddy and God gave you? It was strange. A little laugh was starting to get into Mama's voice. Huh? <laughs> what do you think? Well, bozo, she said, flicking a piece of Bai's hair over his left ear and then another piece over his right one. Maybe you were planning on joining the circus because you sure do look like an honest-to-God clown now. Mama was right, with big clumps of his hair sticking out to the side over his ears like that. He really did look like bozo. I broke out laughing. But Byron shot me a real dirty look, and I stopped and looked back down at my math book. I hated it when things like that happened, and my head automatically went down by itself. What on earth would you do? Why on earth would you do this, Byron? I want a Mexican style hair. I didn't see nothing wrong with it. When he saw Mama just looking sad and me looking like I wanted to crack up again, Byron got kind of mad and said, I think it's cool. Well, Daddy Cool. You enjoy your Mexican style hair while well, you can, as I'm sure when your daddy gets through with you, you won't be enjoying too much of anything. And cool is the one thing you won't be feeling. You just slide your cool self right up on those stairs to your bedroom and wait for him, daddy-o. Byron clomped up the stairs. I told Joey about what happened as soon as our next door neighbor, Mrs. Davidson, brought her home from Sunday school. Me and Joey went up to see Byron. Byron was on the top bunk with his feet dangling over the side and his hands covering his face. 
I love times like this when Byron was about to really get it and couldn't pay me back for teasing him. I stared in on him as soon as me and Joey got into the room. Death Row Prisoner number 541, you have a visitor. Please make this a short visit, ma'am. The priest will be here any minute to give the prisoner his last meal and his last cigarette. Oops, I've forgotten those cigarettes for you. 541, you've been banned from ever looking at matches, remember? Byron was feeling very sad. He didn't say anything to me. He didn't even give me a dirty look. That made me a lot braver. When she saw his hair, Joetta's eyes got real big and her voice got all choky. Byron Watson, what were you thinking about? Look at your head. Daddy's going to kill you. Come down from there. Let's go to the bathroom and wash that stuff out of your hair before Daddy gets here. Byron raised his slick down head from his hands. Go away, Joey. Come on, Byron. We got to wash your hair so that junk comes out. Hurry. Joetta pulled on Byron's dangling legs. Stop, Joey, he finally said. This don't wash out. It's got to grow out. You mean you have to keep it like that until it comes back normal? Yeah, Byron said, kind of smiling. They can't do nothing to it till it grows back. Oh, no. Daddy's going to tear you up. I said, that's right, ma'am. 541 is just waiting for the executioner to get home. Would you like to stick around and write down his last words? Joey turned and snapped. Why is it so funny to you, Kenny? Her eyes looked real mean. Who knows what daddy's going to do to him? Byron's hands came back up to cover his face. I said to Joey, why are you yelling at me? It wasn't me who went and got a butter and no one forced him to do it either. It makes me sick the way she's always protecting Byron. She turned back to him. Who did this to you, Bye? She didn't have to ask. There was only one other 14-year-old in the neighborhood who had a conch. I answered for him. It was Buffhead. Why'd you let him, Bye? I told you not to, to go away, Joey. No, Byron, why'd you let him do this? Because <clears throat> I wanted to, that's why. <clears throat> but didn't you know mommy and daddy would find out? Shoot, you think I care about what them squares say? I said, and there you have it, ma'am. The reason 541 must die. He won't confess his guilt. Byron looked at me for the first time and I started easing toward the door. He said, you think I don't know what you're doing, punk? You think I don't know why you're loving all this mess? But I've been expecting this. This is just like the show I've, I've seen about wolves. They said that the top dog wolf is always getting challenged by jive little wolves. They said the top dog wolf can't show no weakness at all. That, that if he do, if he gets hurt or something, if he steps on a broke bottle and starts limping or something, all the little jive wolves in the pack start trying to overthrow him. That's what's happening right now. You think I'm hurt? And you and every other punk chihuahua in America is climbing out of the woodwork to try to get a bite out of me? Let me tell you something. When we all heard the squeal of a car's brakes outside, Joey and I ran over to the bedroom door, bedroom window, and looked out to the street. The brown bomber had just parked in front of the house. Joey started blubbering. Byron's legs dangled faster and faster. Dad got out of the brown bomber. I pretended I was holding a bugle and started playing that day is done song that they play at funerals. Byron, why won't you behave? Why won't you think about what's going to happen to you when you do something wrong? Why do you always do stuff to get people mad at you? Joey asked. Why don't you make a break for 541? I asked. We listened to the noises of dad coming home from work. The clump, clump of his boots coming off and being dropped in the closet by the front door. The whoosh his chair made when he sat in it. Dad saying, whoo, sure is good to be home. The second whoosh of the chair when mama sat in his lap. The sounds of kisses and giggles and laughs. Then the words we waited for from dad. So what's new in the home from, Mrs. Watson? Oh, not much. There's a surprise that one of your little darlings has for you, though. Good or bad? Hmm, well, I guess that depends on your point of view. Let me guess, which one of the crumb crushers is going to surprise Big Daddy today? Your first one. Oh, Lord, what'd he do? How serious this time? It can't be too bad. You seem pretty calm. Well, let's just say I'm numb. That bad? It depends. If you were happy with your son the way he was, this might be pretty bad. 
However, if you've always wanted a child from south of the border, you might be happy with the new young Mr. Watson. Okay, what's up? Let me put it this way. Do you remember the line Big Daddy used to give every girl Central High School? Hmm, can't say I do. It goes like this. I can show you better than I could tell you. Ring any bells? Oh yeah, that does seem kind of familiar. Well, now's as good a time as any. Show me. All right, you asked for it. Byron, dear, could you please come down here for a minute? Mama didn't even raise her voice. She knew he'd been listening to everything they were saying. Byron took a deep breath and jumped off the top bunk and started down the stairs. I followed right behind him, pretending I was a reporter. I shoved an imaginary microphone in his face. <laughs> Any famous last words, 541? Anything to say to all the little chihuahuas before they start coming out of the woodwork? Do you think the governor might call before they pull the switch? Are you going to come clean and tell what led you down the road to crime? But I figured he didn't have anything to lose, so when he got about halfway down the steps, he popped me square in the ear. Hard. Getting hit when you're not expecting it can really shake you up. My legs started wobbling like my knees were made out of jello. My eyes started leaking water. My nose started running. I tried to go tell on by, but all I could do was sit on the next to last step and hold my ears as tears jumped out of my eyes. My throat wouldn't quit jerking up and down and making weird noises. Joey sat on the step next to me with tears jumping out of her eyes, too. When Byron walked into the living room, Mama said, Mr. Watson, I'd like to introduce you to your long-lost son from Mexico City, Senor Byroncito Watson. Joey made me quit sobbing so we could see what Dad was going to do. But for the longest time, there were no sounds in the living room. We looked at each other. Finally, the chair whooshed as Mama got off of Dad's lap, then whooshed again as Dad stood up. After a long time, Dad said, Uh, uh, uh. Then, well, son, what can I say? It's pretty much permanent, isn't it? Dad's voice was real calm. And that was scarier than if he'd been lying, yelling. Yes, Dad? Yes, Dad. So there's really nothing I can do, is there? I don't think so, Dad. You don't think so, Dad? Well, judging by the condition of your hair, I wouldn't say thinking is one of your strong suits, is it? <laughs> Byron mumbled something. Wow, he must have really felt like he didn't have anything to lose because Mama and Dad just got, just didn't tolerate mumbling. Dad's voice shifted. Excuse me? I said, no, Dad. No, Dad. Joey started boohooing again. Whenever Dad repeated everything you said, like this, some real big trouble was about to follow. Hmm, you know, maybe there is something that can be done about this after all. Suddenly, Dad and Byron were in the doorway leading upstairs. Dad looked surprised to see me and Joey sitting there. He smiled at us. Hi, Kenneth. Hi, Pumpkin. What are you two, why are you two crying? I could just point in my ear, but Joey said, Oh, Daddy, please, what are you going to do? Don't worry, Joe. Everything is okay. You just wait down here. Dad and Byron disappeared into the bathroom and the door locked behind them. Dad hadn't told me to wait downstairs, so I ran up and stood at the bathroom door, peeking through the keyhole. Someone had stuffed some toilet paper in the hole, though, so I had to drop to the floor and peek under the door to see what was going on. From the way Dad and Bai's feet were standing, I could tell that Bai was sitting on the toilet and Dad was standing at the sink. Dad was rumbling around in the medicine cabinet. I could hear Bai sniff a couple times. Then dad started whistling that stupid song, straighten up and fly right. Dad's feet took the two steps from the sink to the toilet. Byron said, oh man, I heard a tr -tr -tr sound and the floor around their feet started being covered with stiff, reddish brown, Mexican style hair. Dad kept whistling and cutting. Choo chicka, oh man, hold your head still. I hate to take one of these ears off by mistake. Dad went on whistling. Oh, man. Kenneth, what are you doing? Mama called me from downstairs. I ran from the door and got halfway down the steps before I said, Nothing, Mama. Come on down here and do nothing. Yes, Mama. What's your father doing? He's whistling, straighten up and fly right and cutting all of Byron's hair off. Mama laughed. Joey sat next to her, still looking worried. Three of us sat on the couch for about half an hour before we heard Bai scream as loud as he could. Dad hollered down to us. Just a little aftershave. 
We heard the bathroom door open. Dad came down the steps first. Mrs. Watson, he said, I'd like to introduce you to your long lost son from Syme, his royal highness, Yule Watson. Byron stepped into the living room with a real mean scowl on his face. Not only had Dad cut all of Byron's hair off, he also shaved his head. Vi's head was so shiny, it looked like it was wet. And Mrs. Watson, Dad said, you can't possibly deny this is your child. You can tell this boy has got a ton of sand's blood in him. Look at those ears. Poor Byron. If he'd have known how far his ears stuck out to the side, I bet he never would have gotten that butter. Mama put her hand over her mouth and said, Lord, don't blame that on my side of the family. Someone switched this child at the hospital. Joey laughed because she was relieved Byron hadn't been executed. Mama and Daddy laughed at Byron's ears, but none of them laughed as hard as me. Go get the broom and dustpan and sweep the, that garbage in the bathroom up. Then go stay in your room. This is it, Bye. You're old enough now, and you've been told enough. This time, something's going to be done. Now beat it. Dad's forehead was all wrinkled when he said this. They sent me and Joey outside so they could have one of those adults-only talks. When me and Joey drifted back into the house after what seemed enough time for them to talk, Dad was on the telephone. He was holding a receiver away from his ear and making a funny face. I could hear someone yelling from the phone. Dad whispered to Mama, Why does she think she's got to yell into the phone for a long-distance call? <laughs> Mama slapped his arm and whispered back, You leave my mama alone. They were talking to Grandma Sands all the way in Alabama. Me and Joey crowded up next to them on the couch and heard Grandma Sands yell, This is costing y'all a fortune, Daniel. Let me talk to my baby again. Dad handed the phone back to Mama, then dug his finger around in his ear like he was going to death. Mama gave Dad a dirty look and said, Okay, Mama, we'll be getting back with you. We love you. Bye-bye. She said this stuff Southern style. And that was it. We thought that was the end of Byron's latest adventure until a week later when Dad brought the home Dad brought home the TT AV700 in the Brown Bomber 